Paul was talking, obviously you're having a great series, but he, you kind of become one of those players where when he puts you somewhere, you make the other guys better, you make the line better. Do you think that's because you're just easy to play with, or are you adjusting your game to play with your new line mate each time you move, do you think? Um, I try to adjust my game a little bit. Um, you know, try to give my line mates the, the freedom to play their game. and um, So, yeah, I, I adjust my game a little bit and just try to bring a little bit of energy. Sometimes, you know, might not might not be me. It might just be, you know, when you switch lines up, it gives everybody a little spark and um, just seems to be clicking right now. Front row, Jordan. Oh, yeah, I have one for each you first. Anton, to sort of build off of that, how easy is it to play with Evan? You played with him a good bit this year. How easy is it to play with him? What's it like seeing what he's done so far this, this, this series? Yeah, I mean, he's been, he's been really good this series and the whole playoff. and I mean, obviously the whole season as well, but it's been really fun to play with him. Uh, we talk a lot, you know, he's easy to play with, uh, easy to talk with and go through some plays, but at the same time, he works hard every day on and off the ice and and I think that's uh, the biggest key to, for just for his success, I think. And then Evan, with your goal from last game, obviously get it, they get the power play goal and you get it right back in that shift. Just momentum-wise, being able to get that goal, what did that do for you guys on the bench and just to be able to make sure it didn't, Edmonton didn't get a chance to start building off of, off of what they were doing? Yeah, uh, I think it was big for our whole team. Um, Starts off a simple play, just a you know a four check, a hard rim puck, and then get into the net. And sometimes you know when you get down in games, you you try to make you know too cute of plays, or you try to spread the game open. And I think you know the reason why we've had so much success this year, especially when we get down, is that we don't change our game. And um, I think it was an important shift for us to just you know continue to play our brand of hockey. And um, yeah, would have liked to got it gotten a couple more though. Back left. What's been the message in the locker room to refocus and clinch the series? Um, I think it's you just take it game by game. It's you know a new day and a new chance to to win and um, you know I think there's a lot of belief in our room and um, it's just going out there and executing sticking to our game plan putting our best foot forward and um, you know we believe if we do that we'll get the results we want. And just following on that question, you guys won a game in Edmonton earlier in the series. Um, how do you ref how do you find similar success in a hostile environment? Um, I think you you know you embrace it. I think that's the biggest thing. You got to embrace you know going into opposing teams building with a loud crowd and um, and you know using it as motivation. Um, you know we did a great job doing the same thing in, in Boston and. And New York, um, to you know, even even Tampa, you know, two very loud, three very loud crowds. Um, game three in Edmonton, and you just got to embrace it. You got to enjoy hearing the noise almost against you. It's you, you know, it's easy at at home to use the fans to get you motivated, but I think if you look at it. Um, with a certain frame of mind, you can use the opposing crowd's energy and use it as fuel to get you going and and have fun with it and enjoy it. And I think that's you know that'll be key for us. Front right. That's a question for either of you guys. Uh, Chucky had like a, I think a nine game goal drought. He gets one in game five and had a very good game overall. When he's playing at his best, just how much of a boost does that give you guys both, you know, mentally and just as a team? How much does it help when he's playing just at his peak? Yeah, he, he, you know, he's one of our leaders. So, you know, when your leaders are leading, it everyone follows behind. And, um, yeah, I think it was big for him to, to get a goal there. And um, probably the, you know, best game um, he's had this series. Um, and I think when he's at his best, he's just a force. He's He's unstoppable. He's big. And he wants the puck. He wants contact when he has the puck. You know, he's so good at at protecting it and um, when he's getting to the dirty areas he's one of the best in the league at it and I think it's one of his one of his biggest skill sets I think it's why he's you know such a, a good he's been such a good playoff performer and um, I think if he brings that mentality that he'll continue to have that success. Anton do you want to add anything to that? I think he said pretty much everything. Okay, well, I'm going to use his follow-up then. How many times has Paul shown you guys the video of A, him chasing down 
the the empty net shot and or B the him taking the, the puck away from McDavid? I mean, uh, no, we haven't seen it, but obviously we saw it last game. But uh, I mean, he he's giving everything he has, and so do we all. We we play with our just leave the heart out every every game and just trying to do our best. Uh, and tomorrow's a new opportunity to just go out there, have fun, and just leave it out out there. And real quick, how good has Evan been? I mean, you don't have to listen, but I mean, has he been the MVP of the finals for you guys? I think I already said a lot of good things about him, but yeah, he's been really good this series. Uh, not even only because he's scoring goals and being important, but he, he works hard. He, he does a lot of small things that helps the team. To, to win and he just he's a he's a leader and he's he's been stepping up a lot this year and this playoff. Do we have any more English questions? Thanks. We'll take one more in English and then we'll do some finish. Evan Paul said yesterday that he doesn't look at this as pressure. He's like, you know, it's it's three two and yeah, you lost two games but it's three two. Um, do you guys look at it the same way? I mean obviously it's two games you would have liked like to win. Uh, that that's a given, but you still have you're still leading the Stanley Cup final. Do you guys look at it that way, or do you feel the walls kind of closing in a teeny bit? No, I think if you were to tell anyone they'd be three two up three two in the Stanley Cup finals, you'd you'd be pretty ecstatic about it. I also think if you ask any player in any series if they would like to sweep their way to a Stanley Cup, then they'd all say yeah too. So um, there's we have an opportunity to to go into a hostile environment in Edmonton. Um, and win a hockey game, and it's a simple mindset. We're going out as a group. We're going to stick together. We're going to do it for the guy next to us, and we go out there and win a game. Thank you for your time, Evan. Uh, if you want to hop off, you can. No way. Uh, <laughs> so Evan and Anton will answer and finish now. Morris Anton. Tämä on tekninen kysymys tähän alkuun. Minkälainen ero on jäässä Edmontonissa versus täällä Miamissa? Ei mun mielestä paljon ole mitään eroa, että et aika, aika samalta tuntuu molemmat jäät, että en ole huomannut, että olisi mitään eroa. Okei. Okay. Kuinka sinulta sujuu odottamiseen, odottaminen otteluun, jossa mestaruus on katkolla? Siis kuinka pitkä on odottavan aika? Ja miten henkisesti valmistaudut tulevaan otteluun, esim. mielikuvaharjoittein tai elokuvia katsellen? No joo, nyt on jo pari peliä ollut mahdollisuus voittaa ja... ja ei olla pystytty voittamaan, niin tässä, tässä on ehkä koettanut siirtää nämä ajatukset pois ja pysyy hetkessä ja hetkessä eikä miettiä yhtään eteenpäin tai, tai taaksepäin, että nyt vaan mennään päivä kerrallaan ja peli kerrallaan. Että nyt seuraava peli laitetaan kaikkia, koitetaan vaan mennä sinne nauttia ja, ja koittaa pelaa kauden paras peli, mutta totta kai koittaa katsoa, katsoa tuota, leffoja tai, tai tuota, sarjoja tuossa lennon aikana ja siellä on rauhoittu. Perhettäsi, isä ja veli, on täällä paikalla, eikö vaan? Kyllä. Minkälaista kannustusta heiltä on tullut mestarustaistoon? No, ne on ollut iso apu koko kauden mittaan ja itse asiassa koko, koko elämä ja koko ura. Että ne on aina ollut, ollut siinä jeesaamassa ja, ja isä ja äiti on ollut iso osa, miksi mä edes pelaan, pelaan jääkiekkoon ja miksi mä edes päässyt näin pitkälle. Eli kaikki ne tunnit, mitä ne on laittanut kuskaamiseen ja... ja ruoan tekoa ja kaikki pienet asiat ää, nuoren, nuoren, nuorena poikana, mutta oli kiva, että ne pääsivät tänne kattoon ja oli iso apu niistä. Thank you for your time, Kiitos. Yes. Kiitos. Cool. Uh, uh, Coach OEL out there today still manning the, the top unit. Yeah. Just, obviously he's done that for a decade. Just what do you like about him in that spot? And does it change things when you go from a righty to a lefty quarterbacking up there for you guys? It won't, it won't for him. And it goes back to what, how you'd phrase that. Like, this is what he's done for his entire life. It just used to drive me nuts. Because we'd pre-scout him, and when you're out in the West, you'd see their team a bunch of times, and he gets across the top on the power play, and you, you got to get in the shot lane. You just have to. And we just could never get in the shot lane, and he would find holes, you know, and if it wasn't there, he wouldn't force. The composure that he has on the top, I think, sets him apart, and he's relishing it, right? He's, it's back in his his wheelhouse so we just we liked it we, we ran him there I think we had a 
piece of a power play that he went out on uh, later in the game, and we liked the way that looked. Right side, George. Nick Cousins looks uh, ready to go, fired up. Yep, and that's it. Like those guys that have kind of come in and out of the lineup, um, you, you can just tell by how it's not easy for them. But in their off time and they're under less game intensity, they come back in and they're jacked. Right? They got, I thought Ryan was really good in the game. So it's his turn to draw him. This playoff, you've been switching. It seems yeah. like you're switching. We did the two. pairs up until the last. I just. I, I had really liked where Kyle was at, and not that he had a game that changed my mind, but I thought he deserved based on play to stay in. But the switch was kind of there. I thought if there was a game six that Nick would go in. Left side, front row. A couple of things. Um, I was a little confused yesterday by one thing you said. What, now you know, welcome to my world. Well, yes, it happens. Hourly. Matthew made, makes the save, mm -hmm. and that's the highlight that gets replayed a billion times. To be, to be clear, you... The back check was... I thought that was awesome. Yeah. I watched that a hundred times. That one was... And we had fun with it, too. It was pretty good. Did you... Yeah. It's been... Oh, you yeah. Broke just it. on a loop in the room. Okay. We're going to run it in training camp when he tries to get in behind and say he can't catch those guys. Because McDavid is kind proof. of fast. and I got proof. Chucky did get there. So uh, This one's a very hard-hitting hockey question. Should you get paid more now that you've played games in fall, winter, spring, and now this is summer? Should there be some sort of cash bonus? Mm, no, I'm okay. I'm <laughs> fine with it. They f they pay us in food. They pay we they feed us nine times a day. The players are fine. I've gained 15 pounds. <sighs> yeah, no, I'm good. Front right, Jordan. Yeah, just back with the fourth line wingers. What is it about the two pairings that you like with Cousins Lombard together and Sten and uh, sorry Lawrence and Ocposo? Yeah. Just, what is it about the two duos that they're similar play as a pair? Um, speed and hands. So the Knicks got a really good set of hands on him and he, and, and he can play the game in some tight areas and, and Ryan's got the speed so Steve Lorenz has that speed component. Oki's you know, scored 20 plus goals in his career a bunch of times so the hands and the shot are there. So they're similar in that and that's why they've moved his pairs. The, the reason that those pairs are is that Nick and uh, Ryan have experience together. So that line for Kevin is a line he's played with all year, right? He knows that group. They know how to interact with each other. So that's why we just moved him as pairs. Front right. Um, I saw Ekblad didn't skate today. Is he, yeah. is he fine? A hundred percent. He didn't skate on the second day either. And, and that's just the kind of more of a routine. So that practice today is 19 minutes long. Mm -hmm. there, there wasn't anything he needed to be out there to do. And then with Chucky, I mean, he got his first goal in, I think, nine games uh, in game five. When he's at his peak, just how much of a, of a boost is it beyond just, you know, normal Chucky? Well, I thought that line was the, the, may have made the biggest adjustment to their game going into game five. They were really strong defensively, and then that's when – that line's like almost like a broken play line, right? They, they can quick strike off a forecheck, off a – uh, the stretch game or the up and down the ice game, certainly Sam Bennett can do that, Rodriguez can do that, but their best is in close area, close quarter combat. That's, that's when those guys are at their best. So what they did in the game for me is they gave themselves the most amount of minutes in that context. And in that place, then for me, Matthew finds a rhythm to his game and the hands and everything starts to go back together. We'll take two more questions back left. Hi, Coach. Are you feeling more urgency to close things out? And can you describe the team's atmosphere now going into a game six with the potential yeah. to win it all? Yeah. It's more calm today than it was three, four days ago. And it's just the experience as a piece of life that's not like anything else, right? There's no way necessarily to prepare for that new experience. But now we've got kind of two games under our belt, and I, I loved – our game five, five on five play, I thought we showed some real maturity and growth in that. And so we're learning, we're learning how to do this and learn how to feel it. So there is, I don't know that, the, I, I, I'm not trying to fight the word pressure. Um, there's certainly lots of energy to be had, to be collected and to learn how to focus that energy. And I thought we did in game five, I thought we got a handle on it. So we'll look forward to it. I mean, we, if whatever your best day is that you look forward to, there's probably a whole lot of energy involved in that. And 
there is for us in this line of work, this is our big time, right? This is the, where all of the juice is. So learning how to kind of get comfortable with it and how to focus it, um, a really important life skill, really imp in terms of the life of a team and maybe even more than that, the life of an organization, to have people have the experience that we're getting right now is just incredible. Last question from George. And on that note, you're going, last time you went to Edmonton, they were down 0-2. I'm sure that city is just going crazy. Can you feed off that energy when you guys land at the airport, when you get to the hotel, when you go to morning skate and you just feel that, that buzz that, uh, of an all-encompassing buzz? Oh, there's a lot of jokes there. <laughs> None of them can be on TV. But I just want to, get, I want to give you 30 seconds to fire out your own in your own head and smile about that. Um, I'm not, I'll just tell you what I think. We've already done it for both teams. Yeah, the crowd is going to be lit up just like the last game here. It was incredible. Like all of these games, it is just on fire. So you almost feel it less. I mean, there's a truth to kind of desensitization to the two extreme events, right? You get a, I don't know, a fireman, firewoman, first day on the job, first fire they go to, it's on. There's a lot going on. Ten years in, yeah, blazes three times the size, doesn't matter, no dorm going in. There is something to that. So the further, the more playoff experience you get as a group, I'm not saying there's going to be less juice. It's just you're not going to be overwhelmed by it because you've felt it. Well, you obviously wasn't over. You weren't overwhelmed. What I'm saying right, is, like, right. and both that. teams, both teams have been able to come into the other building and win a game they needed to win. And everybody's got it now, right? They, they don't need to turn the music up anymore to get the players more jacked up. It's there.